Hello everyone, welcome to Taiwan Bar. Today we're going to talk about selling out Taiwan, which um, everyone seems to think is a new thing. Goto Shinpei thought Taiwanese people were nothing but a bunch of money-grubbing, death-fearing egotists. To Taiwanese people nowadays, this description is yeah, it's pretty on point. Huh? Wait a sec. Who is this Goto Shinpei? That's Kudo Shinichi. The names don't even sound alike. <clears throat> As an intro for Goto Shinpei, let's start our story with Bonjour. The Taiwanese were so close from bonjouring each other like the French because Taiwan was almost sold to France by Japan. Really? Spill the beans! To understand the importance of this selling Taiwan incident with Mr. Goto Shinpei, let's start from how the Japanese rule in Taiwan started. <clears throat> Here we go! In 1895, Japan took over Taiwan according to the Treaty of Shimonoseki, but couldn't handle Taiwan's crimes. All the armed resistances gave the first few governor generals a big headache. Nogi Maresuke-san once explained, Governing Taiwan is like a beggar getting a horse. You can't tame it, and it kicks you to death. During the first three years of the Japanese rule, governor generals changed back to back to back from Kabayama Sukenori, Katsura Taro, to Nogi Marasuke. Even when the fourth governor general, Kodama Gentaro, came to office, he could still hear them blaka blaka blakas like Chinese New Year. Holiday spirits! In fact, apart from the resistance, the Japanese also got the heebie jeebies from pandemics. Taiwan was hot and wet and filled with cutie little diseases like malaria and the plague. Just to give you an idea, when Japanese troops were busy invading the South in 1895, 160 people people were killed in action. More than 500 people were wounded, but those who died from diseases were up to Problem? That's 30 times more casualties. That's a lot. You can tell by the numbers how serious the epidemics were. On top of the casualties, expenditures were also a big problem. For example, in 1896, Taiwan's public finance revenue was less than 7 million yen, but the expenditures were up to 23 million. How are you supposed to make ends meet when you're spending three times what you make? Hold on, let's clarify something real quick. Ano, the Japanese people that came to Taiwan at that time may be a little different from the clean and polite people we know them to be. Because of the hot weather, some Japanese folks stripped down and strolled around making Taiwanese people feel awkward! Not to mention corruption, robbery, and messed up popos. Let's just say Taiwanese people didn't have a very high opinion of the Japanese back then, making it even worse to be colonized by them. As for the Japanese who were sent there, they felt like soldiers being sent to the Spratly Islands. What? Where? Is that a place? Exactly. Taiwan didn't have any decent schools, hospitals, or houses, but it did have a bunch of diseases. It was like being in exile. In fact, it was. Anyway, people dying, money spending, both made Mr. Nogi Marisuke very, very angry. When people back in Japan started throwing shade at Taiwan, the National Diet wanted to sell Taiwan for a meager 100 million yen to France. A debate we call the Taiwan Bai Kyaku Rong. 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 If Taiwan was actually sold to France, we could have ended up eating croissants for breakfast and building Eiffel 101s in Taipei. Just when Taiwan was about to go full bonjour, Kodama Gentaro came to save the day! Bonjour, bonjour! Kodama thought Taiwan had high military value and could serve as a barrier to the south border. We already put in so much effort, lost so many people, we cannot sell it. Even though Taiwan is a hard little nut to crack, if we do, Japan could prove to the western world that it also has what it takes to colonize countries and get the golden ticket to be one of the cool kids. In the end, the Diet decided to give the government one last chance, and Kodama took his right-hand man, Goto Shinpei, to Taiwan. But at that time, Kodama was also the minister- sorry, the minister- the minister- um, the minister of the Amimi- <laughs> Get on with it! The minister of the army in Japan. So most of the time, he wasn't even in Taiwan, and the hard work just became Goto Shinbei's job. Ta-da! Here we go! Goto believed that Taiwan must be ruled by biological principles. For example, flatfish have their eyes on the same side, but sea breams have their eyes on opposite sides. How could you force a flatfish to grow its eyes on both sides? So let Japanese be Japanese and Taiwanese be Taiwanese. There's no need to impose Japan's rules on Taiwan. Like when you date someone, you also need to get to know them first. Am I right? 
it, Goto decided to understand the habits of the Taiwanese population before creating corresponding policies. First of all, he started with a bunch of investigations like land, demographics, forestry, and old habits to understand Taiwan. Huh? What was the last one again? Well, you know. The investigation of the customs and traditions and habits of Taiwan. The investigation of the customs and traditions and habits of Taiwan. The investigation. Goto observed how marriage and ownership worked in Taiwan as a reference for legislative and judicial systems, blending in like a chameleon on a rainbow. Now we can finally tell you guys how Goto Shinpei solved the two major problems to prevent Taiwan from being sold. First off, the money problem. Thanks to land investigations, Goto bumped the land rent revenue from 860,000 yen to a whopping 3 million, a threefold growing spurt. Not bad at all. On the other hand, the Monopoly Bureau was also a huge driving force towards Taiwan's financial autonomy. The Monopoly system meant that only the government could sell certain things, and it brought in an average annual income of 5 million yen, mainly from selling opium, salt, and camphor, especially from opium. Opium got the whole team on his back. LeBron James filling up the scoreboard carrying half the sale. By the way, at that time, opium addiction was a deep-rooted social problem in Taiwan. But to the government, the business was just easy money. Let it go? Hell no. Anyway, Goto Shinpei finally made Taiwan economically self-sufficient. Huh? What about the public safety problem? Goto sent a kajillion cops, like a lot of cops, like an ant army of cops, along with community-based watch systems and local militia to protect the world from devastation. But Taiwan paid a high price for this so-called peace. Taiwanese people lived under police surveillance. Common folks had to call the police sir. Parents threatened their kids by saying the cops are coming and just by seeing the police everyone wet their pants later on Goto proclaimed the bandit punishment ordinance giving the police even greater power more than 5,900 people were arrested and more than 3,200 of them were executed you can probably guess that the Taiwanese people were pretty well behaved after that alrighty now you can probably understand a little bit more about how Kudo oh no Knock it off! How Goto Shinpei prevented Taiwan from being sold to France. To sell or not to sell. Japan weighed its options rationally from a colonial perspective, but also with the romantic touch to prove itself to Western countries. Anyhow, when we look back at specific parts of history, avoiding emotional judgments is really important for us to get closer to the truth. If Taiwan was actually sold to France, what would our lives be like now? If you still think this is an easy question to answer, well, we just wasted 10 minutes. Okay, after all that talking, I'm a bit thirsty. Let me drink this sake and we'll see you next time. Bye! If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to support us even more, you can visit our website and check out our crowdfunding options to let us make more of these videos. Until next time, see ya!